I'm Bambi Francisco with a segment of Lessons for Entrepreneurs, and I'm speaking with Alfred Lin. He's the COO and CFO of Zappos. Alfred, you've had quite experience selling companies, or at least being inside of a company that sold to another company, Zappos to Amazon, $1.2 billion, Link Exchange to Microsoft, $265 million. You were at Tell Me, you helped, you helped see revenue grow from zero to $120 million. So what, what's the key to growing revenue? You, that's pretty much why these companies have been purchased, because they've seen revenue grow so quickly. Yeah, I think the, the interesting part of it, a lot, a, lot of com a lot of entrepreneurs ask me, how do you get your company sold? And the real answer is, like, build a real sustainable company first. And uh, there's not really a lot of uh, inside lessons. I, I mean, you can summarize the lessons from what your, your parents told you about just working hard um, and being very passionate about what you're doing. And so I think the, the, the lessons are, Find something that you are really, really, really passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, something that you want to change the world, um, mm -hmm. and 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 do that. And then the second thing is, then you you know you're gonna you're gonna be in that world, wherever that world is, about uh, whatever that market is, and then you're gonna have to find something that's really, really compelling to a customer. Mm -hmm. It's something that they really, really uh, want. Not we'll just pay for. <laughs> what and pay we'll for. Pay for. And pay for. But, but that's the key. I mean, you can be passionate. There are many people who are passionate about their businesses. They are not necessarily very good at coming up with a business model or something to uh, sustain their passion. So you seem to have a good sense of what it what it takes to build revenue, find a business model. So what are some of the lessons there or advice to, in terms of how do you find revenue, that revenue model? Right. So. Um you know, the, the thing about finding a revenue model is you have to have a product or a service that a, cus a customer really, really wants. And so one of the things that, as a startup, you, you don't necessarily know. So you have to find a market that's large. And all the companies that we were in, whether Link Exchange was in advertising, Tell Me Networks was in um, just self-serve customer service, and Zappos, which is selling shoes and handbags and clothing online, all of those markets are huge. And how you go about the, the, the business model is to find a, uh, a market that's huge, try something, try you know, try a revenue model. It may not work, but you know, try as hard as you can. And then if it works, great. Keep focus on that model and keep going. And if it doesn't, continue to iterate and, and move through those challenges. When you got to Zappos, was it 2005? And Zappos was around since 1999. Yeah. Did they have a, a Did they have a revenue model? Did they have a business model? You just came and you just accelerated for it, or did you just come in and just say, "You guys are doing this all wrong." Yeah. And then we have to refocus, and this is the way we grow revenue. Well, it, it, well, we can tell the whole Zappos story. That it's a good example of how the business model changed over time. It, in 1999, when Tony, who's our CEO, and I were really not a part of the company. Uh, we were just investors in the company. Nick came and talked to us about the fact that he couldn't find shoes that he wanted. Yeah. So, and he tried to look on the internet, and it seemed like a good idea that to sell shoes on the internet to him. And we're like, well, most people don't think you can sell shoes on the internet. And here's the differentiator: if nobody else can th can uh, think that you can do it, that's great because if you figure it out, then you'll have no competition for some period of time. Exactly. Yeah. And so. Look, in 1999, the idea was all about selection. It was mm -hmm. providing a great selection for the customer that you couldn't find in, in your local store. And that changed over time because uh, we, and we, we, the business model was basically place order, get, take orders from customers, place the orders with our brand partners, and the brand partners are sent it to the customer. Mm -hmm. And that sounded like a great business model. And what happened was that those um, brand partners, not all of them could actually fulfill real time. Mm -hmm. And so we changed our business model a little bit and we wanted to provide great service. We saw that the customers we provide great service to uh, just tended to come back and purchase more over time. So like, hmm, that's an interesting business model. If we could provide better and better service, can we actually uh, create a business model around that? Because most of the e-commerce companies back then were about uh, you know, either price or selection, and mm -hmm. service wasn't really lacking on the internet. Right. But weren't there risks in taking that inventory? 
and holding that inventory and having to deal with the delivery and the cost yeah. of all that? There's always risk. Yeah. Building any business, there's always risk. And okay. there's a huge, there was a huge amount of risk to taking on inventory risk, taking on delivery risk, taking on customer service risk, but that was something that we thought was a good business model and we continued forward with it. Your, whatever your, um, advan your strategic advantage or your business advantage at the beginning of time when you start the company, it will change over time and you'll, you'll need to sort of evolve that if you want to stay competitive. Give us a couple of pieces of advice for entrepreneurs. Well, one is, I, you know, I think it's very, very important to um, do what you're passionate about. Two is to continue to take risks. I think a lot of uh, CEOs and entrepreneurs um, tend to slow the pace of risk taking as the company becomes successful, mm -hmm. uh, and then at some point they become they, they top out in terms of their growth. Um, and, and it's scary to take risks. Um, it, at the beginning, when you have nothing to lose, it's easy to take risk. Uh, when it gets to be a real business, it gets a little harder. Uh, I was just reading a, a book by Jim Collins about why the mighty f uh, fall and, and how why some companies never give in. And uh, he has this really interesting sort of analogy about taking risks. So if, imagine yourself uh, on a ship. Uh, you want to take risks that might hurt the armor of the at the top of the boat or things like that, but you don't, you don't ever want to take risks that will sink, sink it. you. <laughs> and so he sort of draws a water line and if you mm -hmm. sort of bump into something underneath the water and it, it, it breaks the hull, that's bad. Mm -hmm. If it breaks the top of the ship, it, it can be re you can recover from it. It's not great that it right. breaks the top, but you can recover from it if right. it's above the water line. And, and you just have to sort of think through that. I guess knowing the difference between what risks are going to break the hull or the, you know, move some of the deck chairs around. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, an the, important, part. that's the important part to learn. What about failures or setbacks? Major failures or setbacks? Yeah, I, th I think it's great to, have, to, to make mistakes over time. You just don't want to make the same mistakes over time. Which mistake did you make? We made tons of mistakes <laughs> at, at Zappos. Um, you know. One that you just say, I can't believe I did that. I'll never do it again. Well, I think you just have to have the attitude of we made a mistake, we um, we learn from it, and we move on from it. I, I think that every single mistake is a, can be turned around into an opportunity, uh, so long as you think through that. Uh, it, you know, we probably could have looked at looked back and said, oh, you know, we should have raised more money earlier rather than later. But it turns out to be all those things turn out to be blessing in disguises. We never got to raise a ton of venture capital funding in the early days, which focused us, kept us very, very focused on what business we wanted to be in. Um, it, it forced us to be efficient, as efficient as possible. And look, 10 years later, when we had this huge financial crisis, we knew exactly what we needed to do, which was go back and focus and to sort of just continue to push forward. That's the, the value of experience. Yeah. And turning setbacks into opportunities, that's a good lesson. That's a great lesson, yeah. Thanks, Alfred. Thank you. I've been speaking with Alfred Lynn. He's the COO and CFO of Zappos and Bambi Francisco.